plus Camelia Peterson at 8 a.m. on the STD rates, DUI rates, and other kinds of mayhem skyrocketing after the pandemic. Are Americans just blowing off some steam, or will we get back to business and back to protecting our wee-wees? <laughs> Camelia will brush, blush brighter than the flower that she's named after this morning at 8 a.m. And finally, Matt Welch from Reason Magazine on why the political grifting won't stop. All that and more on the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson at wakeupamericashow.com. Joining us now on the live line, we've got my good buddy, Tony Lavasco, on right now. Good morning, Tony. How are you, sir? Doing well, Austin. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for coming on the show this morning. Glad to have you here. So my first question for you here is, Tony, is, uh, you know, Missouri State business here. The question is um, about the uh, article that I was reading yesterday on the Missouri Times about the possibility that we might get a um, we might get a reduction in tax on diapers and feminine hygiene products. It, as long as it's for the, for the ladies, we can actually get a tax cut done, right? As long as it's something that benefits women in this state, we can get a tax cut, right? You know, I think it's interesting that this idea has been floated, uh, mostly because uh, to me, there is a much simpler option that uh, is already being looked at, that uh, we've already got legislation that's been filed from last year. Uh, and that's uh, Representative uh, Adam Schwadron and uh, Mary Elizabeth Coleman's legislation to eliminate the sales tax on food. Right. That's something that everybody uses. It's across the board. It's something that's a lot easier to quantify how much is being bought and sold because we've been doing it quite some time. Uh, and quite frankly, if we're going to include something like diapers or feminine hygiene products, well, that goes hand in hand with that concept. Uh, I'm generally of the mind when you're looking at tax cuts, when you're looking at any kind of changes to the tax code, you need to do it as broad spectrum as possible. I don't like the idea of targeting one particular industry or, or type of product uh, unless we absolutely have to. I make an exception for food because, you know, everybody's got to eat. That, that is something that is reasonable if, if you want to look at it that way, that that uh, things that are required for life probably uh, shouldn't be taxed. OK, that, that's fine. Uh, but philosophically, taxes should be a way to collect revenue for the state. We should do it as little as possible and we shouldn't be using it as a, a mechanism to kind of control the economy and, and encourage or discourage certain types of purchases. So I, I get a little uncomfortable when we start targeting really specific things like that. Okay. I, I mean, I, I get what you're saying there. And I, to an extent, I agree. But I mean, you know, I do remember my Milton Friedman when he he said famously that I'm in favor of cutting taxes at any times, at all times, whenever possible. Uh, what do you think? Send me a text, 573-319-1586. Again, you can text the Wake Up America show at 573-319-1586. So, I mean, you know, should, should we really quibble about a tax cut, Tony? I mean, yeah, we can, you know, complain for it, but are you going to vote or complain about it? But aren't you going to vote for it? Come on. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, I wasn't suggesting I wasn't going to vote for it. I'm just saying <laughs> if we're going to have a discussion of widening this tax cut, let's widen the tax cut, right? Let's let's not just take little slivers. Yeah. Uh, last uh, summer, I got into a back and forth with the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire because I was talking about how great Missouri is uh, in regards to freedom, Tony. And I don't know, maybe you saw it on Twitter, but this was a big back and forth. They were they were uh, puffing up their chests about how you know free New Hampshire is. And I mean, you know, they don't have a sales tax there. And I, I mean, if I'm being honest, Tony, I was probably really just kind of like, you know, displaying some machismo because Missouri's tax scheme is not that great. We've got property taxes, sales taxes, income taxes. We are, we're not a very good red state, are we, Tony? Well, and we like to make things overly complicated. I mean, even forgetting the amount of taxation, we've got six tax brackets below $9,000 of, of gross income in the year. Do you know a lot of people that work any amount of time that can't make $9,000 in a year? that are still somehow paying taxes with all the deductions. And of course not. It's literally just adding paperwork to the system for no appreciable reason other than it's been there for a while. And here we are looking at overhauling the income tax. And for whatever reason, eliminating those ridiculous tax bracket distinctions, eh, no one seems all that excited. Our budget chair in the House has been pushing for that. But for whatever reason, it just hasn't gotten any traction. And I don't, I don't get it simplifying the tax structure is every bit as important as lowering taxes because you got to make it sustainable so that people can keep an eye on those little incremental increases that the government kind of sneaks by them. The simpler you make it, the easier it is for people to keep an eye on that. 
Totally agree. If you're just tuning in, we're speaking to state representative from Missouri, Tony Lavasco. Tony, I read an article yesterday from Reuters. The title was U.S. Environmental Protection Agency launches an environmental justice office. This is a new office that they claim will be focused on the needs of minority communities overburdened by pollution and oversee the delivery of $3 billion in environmental justice grants created by the recent passage of new climate legislation. This is just wealth redistribution, isn't it, Tony? <laughs> I'm not even sure if it's even that creative. Uh, this feels a little bit like in the, the late 90s when every marketing person on earth decided they were going to make everything, you know, max and extreme because apparently that made it better and they throw a layer of iridescent paint on it and somehow it was a different product. Uh, really, well, this is, we're going to just throw the word social justice and just any kind of government agency now and pretend like all of a sudden like we're for the people I, i'm not even sure they've thought it through enough to suggest that it's some kind of income redistribution scheme this feels like just an excuse to write a press release uh they're getting really transparent in in their attempts to to market towards people for both political purposes and, and quite frankly i think just to pat themselves on the back i mean doesn't this kind of like give credit i mean doesn't this sort of um I, I guess you could say sort of affirm the biases that maybe people like you and I have when it comes to the real true agenda of environmentalists, because, you know, I, I'm of the opinion, Tony, and maybe you disagree. And I know that the social media company um, censors that are watching this right now, looking for an excuse to shut off this stream are, are, are waiting for me to say this, but I, I'm of the opinion that the whole global warming idea, the whole, you know, climate change and global governments, you know, pushing for climate change policies and green new deal. I, I'm, of the idea that this is just an international communist conspiracy to, for to centralize power and control and and more of our money in the hands of the elites and it's not really about environmentalism it's about international socialism your thoughts uh, i would say that's kind of the left's playbook on every issue right i don't yeah. think it's confined to environmentalism I, I think that you know they take a nugget of something that is popular that sounds reasonable that maybe even has some grains of truth to it and then they just add extra layers of complexity and and oh well you just can't understand you've got to trust us we've got to take care of it for you you know it's the same sales pitch that they've been selling for the last you know 100 years in in just rebadged forms as new issues come around uh you know i don't have a problem necessarily with the government involving themselves in the environment in some limited capacity there's not necessarily an obvious market incentive for you to make sure that uh, you know the the environment overall uh outside of your local market area is protected Okay, fine. I'm open to that discussion. But the idea that somehow the only way that the government can possibly make sure that people aren't dumping toxic waste in the rivers is through some kind of ridiculous bureaucratic system with carbon offset credits and 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 tax programs and and, uh, you know, equity czars and all this. It, 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 it's fantasy. It, it's literally just, as you said, an attempt to increase the power base, increase the reliance that people have on government. And honestly, I think it just gives them perpetual things to talk about. I, you know, the environment is one of those things that no matter how perfect it gets, you can always point to something that's less than perfect and say, see, that's why the other guys are terrible, because that gum wrapper's on the sidewalk. You can't ever possibly achieve perfection here, and they know that. If you're just tuning into the program this morning, you can text the show at 573-319-1586. I'm speaking to Missouri State Representative Tony Lavasco. One listener who's a local there from the 573 shout out said, don't forget the BS personal property tax. Yeah, we were talking about this earlier on the show with Tony about, um, you know, getting rid of diaper taxes, potentially taxes on certain sales items here in the state of Missouri. Uh, but the personal property tax has got to be the worst. You know, like this is kind of, I guess this is kind of a morbid thought, Tony, but I mean, and maybe my dad's listening, maybe he's not, but I was looking at all the trailers that my dad has out on the farm and thinking to myself, I'm going to inherit those one day. And all I could think about was I'm going to inherit those tax obligations one day here in the state of Missouri. It's enough to make you want to, um, you know, it's enough to make you want to move out of the state if you've got any kind of property here in the state of Missouri. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, you know, it's nuts to me that we tolerate the concept of having to rent your property from the government, because that's what property taxes are. It, it's literally a statement by the government that if you don't pay your blood money, they're going to come and take away your property for no reason other than, well, they can't. 
I mean, it's not like they're going to use that property for some kind of incredibly important social purpose that they can sell to you as, well, you're making a sacrifice for your neighbors. Oh, no, it's, it's literally just to punish you for not paying your taxes at that point. Uh, it, it, property taxes are the worst form of taxation. Uh, I'd like to eliminate real estate property taxes every bit as much as personal property tax. You know, personal property tax kind of gets the, the, the press because not a lot of states have it. And so it seems especially egregious that we decide to to plant our flag on you're going to pay for your car every year in perpetuity. Uh, but I mean, really, people spend way more money on real estate taxes, whether they're a homeowner or a renter, because it gets passed on uh, than really any other form of taxes other than income tax. So it's it's a big deal. Well, we, there is this perpetual push here in the state of Missouri to try and at least eliminate property taxes for senior citizens. And that has gotten some traction in the past, hasn't it? It has. Uh, I really don't like that idea, honestly, as much as I really don't want to argue against a tax cut. That's one that I, I just I can't do because you're t telling a specific group of people that they're going to get a special tax benefit that other groups cannot. And much like having, you know, affirmative action or race based tax policies, you can't change your age. Right. You can wait. Eventually you might make it to the, the cutoff in time. You know, if, if you're healthy and, and the government doesn't just raise the bar like they do with Social Security constantly. But it's not something that you can somehow work harder or plan for achieving. You just you have to wait. And I don't like that. If we're going to say we want to target a, uh, a tax program towards older group of people, what we ought to do is say, you know what, we're going to drop off your real estate taxes once your mortgage is paid off. The reality is most seniors are going to be the ones that are in that vault, that 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 uh, that bucket. Right. There's not a lot of younger people who pay off their mortgage. It happens, but it, it's still predominantly people that are retired. But we're not locking it to some artificial number that we just pick out of a hat. It's actually something that people can achieve. And it gives them a reason to maybe save some money and pay off that loan. Just tuning into the show, we're speaking to Missouri State Representative Tony Lavasco. You can text the show 573-319-1586. That's 573-319-1586. 1586. Tony, I sent you this article from the Wall Street Journal, and it's called A Nation of Quitters. It's a really good article. And the subtitle was A New Class, The Cyber Bohemians Avoid Work While Living Off Their Affluent Parents. And they're talking about the great resignation and what everybody's blaming on the great resignation, extended unemployment benefits, eviction moratoriums, and all that. But the author of this article claims that he's de he's determined what it is that uh, is the reason for why people are deciding not to go back to work. And he claims that it's because people got a taste of not working and they liked it. You know, they, I kissed a girl and I liked it, Tony. I have to say, I mean, you know, it, do I know some people do want to work and I probably shouldn't be saying this as a right wing talk show host or whatever you might you might say. But like, you know, if you won the lottery, Tony, would you spend your days slaving away? I mean, come on, be honest. Yeah, I, I think that's something that has always been an interesting talking point to me, that that somehow not wanting to work is just some badge of just uselessness. I, I think <laughs> everyone's goal is to work less. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, nobody wants to not do anything at all and just, you know, be a bump on a log until they die. But the point is, you shouldn't have to feel like you need to work in order to stay alive. That's the goal, right? Everyone wants to retire. I don't think it's a bad thing to have the drive to not have to work for a living. The bad thing is when you want to just jump to the end without actually having acquired any wealth or any kind of plan for the future, and you just want to leech off other people. That's the thing that we should be criticizing. Uh, I'd love to see everybody retire by the time they're 30. I think that'd be fantastic. If they've actually earned it and they've got they've got that wealth and they're not just saying, hey, government, please give me stuff. Uh, what I think we're seeing here with this this new economy and the changes uh, since covid is a lot of folks are just recognizing that they actually have a little bit of power in the marketplace as to determining what kind of job they can have, because for the first time, I think in my lifetime, there's a lot more jobs than there are workers, which is, you know, I, I'm just used to the government talking points of like, got to bring jobs to Missouri and, and, you know, that concept that, that we have to lower that unemployment rate. And that that's just such a huge factor in, in what the government's going to work on. And, you know, I got businesses in my district that are closing down because they can't find workers. They've got a good product. They've got customers. They just, they can't bring it to market at, at a sufficient quantity to pay their bills because they don't find staff. And I think the people that are out there, they know that. And they're going to be more picky about what jobs they take. They're going to be a little bit more selfish about what they ask for. They're going to want to work from home, all the things that people maybe dreamed of years ago. And now they think, well, I've got some leverage. Well, the reality is you have leverage up to a point and then no one hires you 
and you live in your parents' basement. <laughs> and so I think you're, I think you're, you're, you're having a lot of people that think they can just kind of milk it for a little bit longer until they find that dream job. And I think sooner or later it's going to snack back and people are going to realize that's just not sustainable. This is a great discussion. And I'm looking forward to talking about this more at seven 30 this morning. I'm going to have a discussion, probably go on a rant or two um, when we get uh, back at seven 30 and discussing that one. Uh, our listeners are texting in this morning and saying, quote, property taxes, are immoral and should be abolished. Amen. I'm with you. Another listener texted in this morning and said, every other group will grow old and benefit, presumably. So, I mean, you know, eventually, you know, if you do grow old, then you do get that benefit. One listener is texting in. I think that's our friend Liz. You can text the show at 573-319-1586. Tony, um, is there anything else that you think that uh, our listeners should know before we let you go? Any Missouri state business, anything that you'd like to promote or, or pump before we go? Well, yeah, I would just say keep an eye on this special session and definitely, you know, give a, a call to your senator and tell them when the House sends them our revised and improved tax cut plan. Uh, don't just look at it and then go home uh, like you have on everything else. The Senate has left us hanging out to dry on many good pieces of legislation in the last couple of years. I actually want to get something done here for the people of Missouri, and uh, we can't do that if the Senate doesn't do their job. So please, whether you love it or hate it, at least talk about it. Don't just disappear. It's going to be a great show. Tony LaVosco, thanks so much for fighting for freedom, and thanks for joining us today on camera. We appreciate your time. Have a great day. You too. Thank you very much. All right. Good stuff. That was good stuff. What did you think? Send us a text. 573-319-1586. That's right. That was State Representative Tony LaVosco, who is a great freedom fighter here in the state of Missouri. We've got lots more freedom fighting to go on the Wake Up America show, coming up next at 718. How do Americans who have money spend their money? How do you spend your money? What's none of your business, Austin? Well, somebody did a poll, and I'm going to talk about that poll. When we get back on the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. I like shooting things, but whenever I can't shoot something, I like to cut things. My life isn't all about shooting and stabbing and cutting, though. Sometimes I have to do actual work, but when I work, I still like to have fun. And there's nothing less fun than trying to cut with a crappy knife. Thankfully, from the ancient sect of Christian knights, who also loved cutting and stabbing, comes a new implement that has received my personal blessing, the Templar knife. Like the ancient sword of Excalibur, you don't choose a Templar knife, it chooses you. You just decide what kind you want on the website first, however, and then order it online, and then it chooses you. The Templar knife comes in a variety of shapes. As a man of culture and taste, I have decided I will never use a terrible knife again. And thanks to the inspiration provided by this excellent product, I have decided to launch a new crusade against anyone using less than superior knives. Join me, brothers and sisters, by visiting uppercuttactical.com slash pages slash Templar dash knives. That's a lot of slashes. For that, you'll need a Templar knife. For 10% off, use code AP for liberty and join me in a quest for glory, for liberty, for Christendom, for the Templar knife. Get yours today. Fire. Your printing company stinks. They charge you too much money and they don't love America enough. We've got the solution. Patriot Printing USA. Whether you're running for office, saving souls, or just need business cards that will get you the new job you've been looking for, Patriot Printing USA has got you covered with the best prices around. Palm cards, brochures, bumper stickers, door hangers, you name it, we've got it. PatriotPrintingUSA.com. That's PatriotPrintingUSA.com. Want an engaging website to boost your business? 
you're just a click away from five-star Fiverr talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. Average Americans are turning into conspiracy theorists at an unprecedented rate. Flip City Magazine was created for new converts to aid in their in-depth research along the path of absolute truth. We offer the hardest hitting news and opinion, delivered uncensored in print directly to your door. Displayed proudly on your coffee table or hide discreetly under your mattress. Flip City is the magazine they don't want you to see, much less read. Subscribe to Flip City Magazine today at flipcitymag.com. I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. It is better to settle these matters in the courts than on the streets. And new laws are needed at every level. But law alone cannot make men see right. Good morning. Rise in freedom. It's 723. And this is the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. Glad to have you here. The Cantina crew is in full swing over on the Facebook live stream. It's good to see you all over there. Kenneth Slayer, Chris Morrill, Paul Marone, Cecilia Harden, Megan Potter. How you doing? Tolly Owens. Looks like our buddy Tony Allegra made it safely out of Florida. He evacuated to South Carolina. They've got a big hurricane headed their way. Definitely want to send a big shout out. And our thoughts are with you down there. Stay safe. Thanks so much for watching and listening to the Wake Up America show. You can text us at 573-319-1586. Are we having fun today? I feel like... You know, when you start the show with a freedom fighter like Tony Lavasco, you know, things are going to be good. We've got lots more great show to go. Lots of great guests. At 8 o'clock this morning, Camelia Peterson joins me. And we're going to talk to her about, well, maybe it's an embarrassing topic, but it'll be interesting. STD rates skyrocketing after the pandemic, which kind of makes sense if you think about it. And then, of course, DUI rates skyrocketing after the pandemic oh oh boy yeah um do you like the new music there boy we've got all kinds of fun stuff going on today um std rates skyrocketing after the pandemic and just all kinds of mayhem and it's sort of a normal normal response you would think people you know they want to get out they want to have a little bit more fun we're going to talk to camelia peterson about that uh at eight o'clock this morning and then i'm excited to have matt welch from Reason Magazine, who's going to join us this morning at 8.30. And Matt and I are going to talk about political grifters. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. You're probably thinking about someone right now just from having said that, right? Political grifting and why political grifting won't stop. You can text the show. I'd love to hear from you. Who do you think is a political grifter? Send me a text and say why at 573-319-1586. That's 573-319-1586. Kenneth Slayer over in the Facebook live stream asked a good question. Maybe you can answer it. He says, if we get rid of property taxes, which I am for, with what tax would you like to replace it? Well, I would, you know, sort of bastardize a Thomas Sowell quote when I respond to you on that and say, when you remove a cancer, what do you replace it with? Oh. 
Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yes. Uh, I appreciate that. Other people? How dare you? Yes, for all the tax lovers out there. Uh, you can text the show at 573-319-1586. Welcome, Eva Lavasco, Tony's wife over there in the live stream as well. We're streaming not only on Facebook at AP for Liberty, we're also on YouTube this morning. All my YouTube friends want to give a big shout out to you. Thanks so much for watching us over there. I'm almost halfway to monetization on YouTube. So if you are not subscribed over on YouTube, please do that. It's basically AP for Liberty everywhere, except for on Twitch, which we also have some cool Twitch people, some Twitch people uh, watching us this morning. And I've got a nice little shout out tool this morning to our friends who can, who are watching like Final Bastiat over there and St. Louis SeaWorld Girl, uh, who also watches us over on Rumble. There's all kinds of great uh, of of great platforms that we're adding the Wake Up America show to. And it just it just makes you feel I don't know. <laughs> it's so good, right? It just feels great. It feels great for the show to be growing and expanding. And man, I, we've got so much exciting stuff going on in the background, in the behind the scenes for this show. So many cool, exciting announcements to come. I mean, I just can't wait to share it all with you. And the great thing is, is that, you know, this isn't, this show isn't on a big network. It's not like, you know, it's not on the mainstream media. It's a completely listener supported show by people like you. One listener texted in this morning says, enjoying the common sense talk this morning. The sales tax rate at the East Side Walmart is nearly 10%. Ridiculous. That's the, okay, that's the East Side Walmart uh, here in Jefferson City. We've got two Walmarts, if you can believe it. Yeah, that's how cool we are. We're not big enough to have a Best Buy, but we do have two Walmarts. The East Side Walmart is the one that's got those two roundabouts up there on the top of the highway, and it's uh, the, with like the American Eagles, and they're all awesome. But um, yeah, 10%. Thank God I don't live on the East Side over there. Jeez. One listener texted in this morning and says, any conservative talk show that uses the phrase in his new book, cough, uh, you cough. That person is a grifter. I see who you're saying right there. And I can't say that person's name. I couldn't say it before and I won't say it now. Another listener texted in and said, no more three networks. Who to thunk? Not quite sure what you mean there. You can text in too at 573-319-1586. Also for the uh, uh, we've got a new commercial in the show today. If you can identify it, the first person this morning to identify the new commercial and to send us a text at 573-319-1586, what the commercial was, uh, you get a free entry for the um, the wooden sign giveaway that we're doing at the end of this week. So if you text the show at 573-319-1586, you're going to get an extra you're going to get an extra entry into the giveaway for the Second Amendment sign that's behind my head. And then I got to figure out what I'm going to put up there behind me. Can I tell you, I actually saw this awesome neon sign that I, I can't afford that I would love to put up there. And it was it's of the Monopoly man. And, and he's got machine guns and he's like cash is flying out everywhere, but it was like $440. So I was like, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe when the, when the show, when, maybe when YouTube gets monetized because we've got to have 4,000 watch hours and we're like almost to 2000, then I'll, I'll get the neon sign of the monopoly man with his machine guns and hang that sign up behind me. And that will be a sign of our success. Another listener texted us and said, um, you are literally a one man show. That is true. That is true. And if you're not familiar with what I'm doing back here, I can show you a little behind the scenes stuff if, if you can check this out i'm not sure if you can pick this up on the camera or not this is the secret to my success and tony lavasco and i were talking about this morning you've got to see the live stream to believe this is a little stream deck so all my beautiful little sounds like how dare you greta thunberg and all that all exist in meme form right here on my stream deck it also helps me to control the show so i can basically be a one-man tv studio uh and it's really fun you know <laughs> All kinds of fun stuff there, you know, and I, I did it with capital capitalism. I didn't have to ask the government for a handout. You know what I mean? I didn't have to go to the government. kinds of fun stuff. No, we're not going to sing the Soviet national anthem this morning. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to talk to freedom fighters and America lovers only. That's right. We're going to have a great time and we're going to be dancing. We're going to be singing. We're going to be talking about freedom and we're not going to be Rick rolling anybody. All right. I got to go to a commercial break. And when I get back, I'm going to talk about 
cyber bohemian lifestyles. Yes, we'll be back on with more Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star Fiverr talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. American conservatism is distinct like America is distinct from the United Kingdom. American conservatism's roots comes out of the Wild West, out of pioneerism. The difference between American conservatives and European conservatives is that Americans are cowboys. We are that God, guns, gold, and girls. It's wild here. And we should stay that way. We shouldn't allow a European version of conservatism to come and infect us here. We like it wide open spaces here, you know, deep in the heart of Texas and all that. show with Austin Peterson. This show has been a huge venture for our family, so we would love it if you could join us. I believe in liberty, and I believe in Austin's ability to spread the ideas of liberty. Do you? I want to ask you today to join Peterson's Patriots with a pledge of $17.76 a month. Help us to stay cancel-proof so we can spread the message of limited government across the country. I joined Peterson's Patriots myself, just in a little different way. Visit wakeupamericashow.com slash support and make your pledge today. Average Americans are turning into conspiracy theorists at an unprecedented rate. Flip City Magazine was created for new converts to aid in their in-depth research along the path of absolute truth. We offer the hardest hitting news and opinion, delivered uncensored in print directly to your door. Display proudly on your coffee table or hide discreetly under your mattress. Flip City is the magazine they don't want you to see, much less read. Subscribe to Flip City Magazine today at flipcitymag.com. Speaker Pelosi's husband, Paul, made a big investment in chips just before Congress votes on a bill that would give $52 billion in subsidies and tax credits to the chip industry. Over the course of your career, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information he received from you? No. And I believe... If you come to our border, you will be turned back. Do not come. Do not come. Have you ever oh, overseen, have you ever received a royalty playing. payment from a company that you later oversaw money going to that company? You know, I don't know as a fact, but I doubt it. Well, I well here's the thing is, why don't you let us know? Time to rise in freedom. It's 736 and you're watching and listening to the Wake Up America show. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. I'm just feeling awesome today. I don't know about you, but um, I feel like it's going to be a great day. 
and I hope that you have a great day as well. Everything's going right. Terry Miller over on YouTube said, mornings are best hearing your voice. Well, thanks, Terry. Glad to have you here. Ron Helton over there on YouTube. Mirage Time. Eva Lavasco. All of our friends over there. Helping us out. We're just growing and getting better every single day. More music, more fun, cool guests, video, audio. Did you know that you can download the stream and listen to the audio? A couple of things, real quick announcements before I get back to the topic. Some people had contacted me and said, hey, Austin, I'd like to just listen to the show, but I, I can't watch it, right? So is there an audio only stream? Well, guess what? There is an audio version of the stream and it's available for you at wakeupamericashow.com. When you go to the website, you'll see the video at the top underneath the chat that's below the video. It says audio only stream. You can just click play and listen to us. But if you can't listen to the show live after the show is over, I go home and I cut it and I uh, cut the show and I put it up uh, on the podcast for you. So you can actually listen to it later, the audio version of the show. And I cut out all the commercials and all that kind of stuff. Now, don't let that dissuade you from listening to the show live because, of course, that's what helps us out the most. Um, but we are on the path to monetization for YouTube. We're about you've got to have 4000 hours of watch time and uh, we've got almost 2000 hours of watch time. So we'll probably get to monetization in YouTube in about a month, a month and a half. So so uh, I'd be super grateful if you subscribe to us over on YouTube at AP for Liberty. All right. All right, Austin, shut up. Enough advertisements. A nation of quitters at the Wall Street Journal. Andy Kessler writes, a new class, the cyber bohemians, avoid work while living off their affluent parents. I love this story. The unemployment rate was 3.5% in July, the same as in February of 2020. But the U.S. has 3 million fewer workers where did everyone go? Andy uh, asked this question. This is in an economy with 11.2 million job openings. And trust me, as someone who would like to be an employer and cannot find someone to hire, I totally under understand and sympathize with the plight of employers. Now, it's mostly men aged 25 to 54 who haven't come back to work. Yeah, man, you owe us your labor. Now, a McKinsey study suggests that 40% of workers are thinking of quitting their jobs. Does anyone want to work anymore? Andy asks at the Wall Street Journal. Now, everybody has an explanation for the great resignation, extended unemployment benefits, uh, eviction moratoriums, baby boomers retiring, work from home complacency, anxiety, long COVID. These are all reasonable excuses. But here's Andy's theory. He says too many got a taste of living, of uh, not working and liked it a lot. Until recently, many people could make more money by not working and became glued to screens, insta-talking, and living the, the easy life by sponging off the rest of us. Now, let's just pause here for just a moment because the, I, the whole um, people are getting paid more to not work thing, that was, yes, that was a thing during the pandemic. There was a brief, I would say, what was it, three or four month period. And I know in Missouri, maybe other states was, it was different, but in Missouri, the, with a federal unemployment benefit and the state unemployment benefits combined, you made more than minimum wage by being unemployed. And yeah, you could say, okay, fine, that plus a $1,200 stimulus check, but the people who still say that now are not paying attention because the federal, at least in Missouri, that federal unemployment um, uh, benefit disappeared uh, after about three months and $1,200. I'm sorry, but that's not a lot of money. It might, it, I, I know it's, it's a, it's a good chunk of money, but I mean, that's not enough to live for a year. Okay. It's, it that, that, that doesn't even cover most people's expenses for a month. And in a lot of cities, in, in a lot of States here in the United States, $1,200 is not going to pay your rent or your mortgage. Okay. Certainly that wouldn't cover my mortgage. The thing is, is that 
the the question of why people aren't returning back to work, you know, it, Andy Kessler over at the Wall Street Journal thinks that he has the answer. And his answer to this, well, before I before I get to that, real quick, let me, this last sentence I think is important. He says, Parisians call those with unconventional lifestyles bohemians. Now we have unemployed, perpetually plugged in, dopamine addled. Oh, dopamine, they're happy. Uh, cyber bohemians. Let's call them cybos. Uh, he's only talking about underachievers, he claims, including those who traded crypto and NFTs and lost all their stimulus and unemployment money after the crypto crash. Lol. Uh, now cybos, cyber bohemians, with nothing better to do, are streaming away, including the first five of an eventual 50 hours of Amazon's new Lord of the Rings show, show and in the darkness, bind them. Uh, is so the, you can buy weed at dispensaries in 19 states, uh, and many 20 and 30 somethings are giggling and wasting away, playing mindless games and humming along to those classic sticks lyrics. Is it any wonder I've got too much time on my hands? Now, Andy calls this cultural malaise, motivational submission. And if I was your typical conservative talk show host, I would just agree with Andy and say, yes, it's a, it's, it's those darn kids with their internets and their TikToks and they're, they're sitting around smoking weed and they're, they're all happy and, and they're enjoying their lifestyle. And when I was their age, I tell you right now, when I was their age, we, we, we didn't, we didn't have happiness. You know, if you wanted happiness, you had to go down to the corner shop and walk up in snow and you had to walk down uh, up up in snow, both snow hills, covered hills both ways. And we didn't we didn't like happiness. We didn't want to be happy. We wanted to be miserable and we wanted to eat dirt and we wanted to, to sit in our own poop, right? Uh if I was a typical conservative talk show host, yes, I was to think. <laughs> I would say that, right? Because that that's what's going to play with a with the typical conservative audience. But I'm not a typical conservative talk show host. Yeah, I'm a right-wing libertarian Republican, but I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to spoon feed you what I think you, you, you necessarily want to hear. I'm going to tell you how I think it is. You know, the economy was screwing over the little guy for quite some time. And people who work for the man, people who work for the bosses and stuff, and listen, I get it. I'm trying to be a boss. I'm trying to hire people. I know it seems like I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth, but sometimes every once in a while, you got to speak up for the working man. Workers of the world, you... Workers of the world, unite! No, no, let's not go there. Okay, <laughs> let's not go that far. Uh, I just, I understand why people don't want to go back to work with inflation at what, 11%, 8 to 11%. They're making far less than they were before. And what there's, the problem is, is how do you make money, right? How do you live, you know, they say sponging off the rest of us. Well, they're not getting those federal unemployment checks and, and those state unemployment checks like they were before. They're not getting a stimulus check like may, many of the major corporations were, the people who scammed off of those PPP loans were, right? But what they're saying is, what Andy Kessler is saying in the Wall Street Journal, is what they're doing, these people are doing, is they're leeching off their parents, right? What they say they're doing, they're saying um, uh, enabling parents are the problem. They can afford it. As of March, baby boomers were sitting on a whopping $71 trillion to spoil their kids with. Did you know that half of U.S. households are currently supporting an adult child? Maybe that's why so many young folks use hyphenated names paying tribute to both enabling parents. Okay, pause here for just a moment, okay? So... The baby boomer generation is sitting on $71 trillion of wealth, right? And they're using it to spoil their kids. Okay. Well, here's the thing. You know, people are living longer, right? So they're they're not retiring, right? So people my age, millennials, are, we're going to be the first generation of people who are going to live below the means of our parents' generation. And you're going to tell those people who are living worse off because they can't go and they can't get advancements in their careers because the, the I'll tell you, many of these big companies and corporations that I work for, the people who are at the top, are, are, they're not they're not working all that hard okay they're just they're sitting there on their patronage and the fact that they know somebody or they've been around forever and they're collecting these massive paychecks again many of the corporations and you know institutions and places that I've worked for and they don't contribute squat and they collect gigantic paychecks and they refuse to retire because they don't want young and they don't want young blood and they they crush talent young talent that comes into these institutions and prevent them from advancing because they don't like competition and they don't want come somebody come 
coming in there with all these fresh ideas and saying, hey, here, let's do this. Let's try this. They don't like things getting shaken up. So if those people are taking care of their kids, fine, let them. I mean, do, I mean, here's the thing. And again, I, we've talked about this on the show before, you know, you know, not everything is World War II, okay? Not everything has to be World War II, all right? What was the point, again, of fighting for freedom, of going out there, beating the Nazis, then fighting the Cold War, defeating the communists, and, and all of this talk that we heard from the boomer generation? Again, I'm not trying to pick on you too much, guys, but what was all of this talk from the boomer generation about, about wanting to, like, help your, have your kids, you know, be able to live a better life than you had. What exactly does that mean? Living a better life than you had, right? It, it, it you know, and so when they do go out and they go and they live a, a better life than you did, right? They didn't have to suffer the, the struggles and the travails of possibly getting nuked and ducking and covering underneath their, their, uh, their desks, right? When they were growing up as a kid and going to school, they didn't have to worry about getting drafted to go off and fight the Imperial Japan and dying on the beaches of Iwo Jima, right? What, what exactly were they fighting for when you said that they were fighting for our freedoms, right? They were fighting so that we could live a peaceful life, so that we could live a better life. I mean, again, right, what's the point? Or does everybody have to be conscripted into the military and go off and fight in Ukraine, right? Like Russia is doing to people, right? You saw this, I saw this video yesterday of this of this kid who went out there, this recruiter who's forcing these kids into conscription. And the kid said, no, nobody's going to go fight in Ukraine. And he shot the recruiter and, and killed him. And you know what? Good, good, because... Uh, forced military conscription is slavery. And you know what? You can you can fight and you can kill someone who is trying to enslave you. So I have to say that whoever that kid was, he's a hero. Forced conscription. No, we should not have to live in. That's not a free society. Rationing. Not, not, not everybody wants to live like there's a war going on right? We want to live a better life, okay? So I'm not going to go and I'm not going to kick these kids in the teeth because they're living off of their parents' $72 trillion in wealth while they're still at the head of a major corporation, not doing much, just collecting a paycheck and squashing any talent that tries to come up in these corporations. Again, not trying to be all commie here or anything like that and still think you ought to work for a living and, you know, make your own way and that's the best way to define yourself, but not everybody has to be great, not everybody's going to go out there and achieve incredible things. You know, it's the same mentality behind, you know, college isn't for everyone, right? It's, it's the same mentality, right? Going out and doing incredible things and achieving, you know, you know, wealth and having this big lifestyle, it's not for everybody. But if you live a, li a good life, a, a nice life, and it's fairly soft, and yet, you know, your parents are rich, and you get to go live on a beach house and, you know, wherever, and you don't have to work too hard, maybe you have a little odd job here and there, and you get a family or a girlfriend and stuff, and yeah, you're smoking weed and you're having a good time, you know what, that's what the troops fought for. They fought for freedom, not for you to have to live on rations, not for you to be conscripted like they were, were into slavery and go and fight some stupid foreign war that you've got nothing to do with. All right. Sorry for this big, giant epic rant. I do. I know I need to go to a commercial break. Uh, yes, I'm going to go to a commercial break. OK, well, I've got more to say about this when we come back. If I have time, I've got a video clip of traditional karate used in a street fight. A lot of people say, oh, you can't use karate in a street fight. You can't use karate in a street fight. You got to see this video. I'm going to play it for you when we get back. What, are you disagreeing with me? Did you, you didn't like what I had to say? Now, come on now. Text in, but don't be mad at AP. Send me a text, 573-319-1586. I got to hear your point of view on this one. And if your points of view are more interesting than the karate video, I'll play that when we get back. On the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. I enlisted as a medic to be there to help my patients, and after an injury, I found myself as a patient. I experienced post-traumatic seizures. Depression is a big one that comes along with it, PTSD. So I pursued my PhD in neuroscience and regenerative medicine. The coalition has helped fund my academic pursuits. 
They genuinely care about helping the vet in whatever way that they can. Through I enlisted as a medic to be there to help my patients, and after an injury, I found myself as a patient. I experienced post-traumatic seizures. Depression is a big one that comes along with it, PTSD. So I pursued my PhD in neuroscience and regenerative medicine. The coalition has helped fund my academic pursuits. They genuinely care about helping the vet in whatever way that they can. Through supporting the coalition, you're supporting some of the veterans that have the biggest needs. Visit saluteheroes.org to learn more. If there wasn't going to be somebody who was a fiery champion of liberty, somebody who would, who would get out there and who would be aggressive, and if they wouldn't do it with more fire or passion than I had, then I would go and I would fight this battle for us. I've fought for the principles that we all share. Parties tend to be secondary to me. We're here because we believe in the principles of liberty. I am not a perfect messenger, but I think I'm a damn good one. This is a replica of our first president's flintlock pistol. You have my full support, my respect, and my gun. enough yet? Do facts no longer matter? Are lies to be encouraged instead of punished? This is not our inheritance. If truth no longer matters, we will not remain free for long. This is our generation's challenge, to defend our founder's hope that we the people could self-govern if we defend our right to get the facts. And right now, we're building the only defense a free people have, the facts on every politician every position they held, every statement they've made, every vote they've made, and any cash they've taken. It's the real history on those now pandering for your vote. There are hundreds of young people building our defense right now, and they need your help. We all have our passions, but as our ancestors knew, when events become so foul they threaten us all, we must stand and defend each other. Please, have our backs. Join us at votesmart.org. What would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors? What would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? that you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. It's me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. Halloween is coming. The festival of Salman approaches. And your lazy butt doesn't have a Halloween costume yet? How can you pledge allegiance to the Dark Lord this year and possibly offend everyone at the same time? Visit the AP for Liberty shop and get your shirt today! The nine most terrifying words in the English language are I'm from the government and I'm here to help! <laughs> so grab your government is scary tea and tell everyone at the party that you're here to help! <laughs> Other great seasonal items are available as well, so don't miss out! Then visit AP for Liberty shop today! That's AP for Liberty shop dot com. Good morning, it's 7.55. You're watching the Wake Up America Show with Austin Peterson. Thanks for tuning in to wakeupamericashow.com. You can text us this morning at 573-319-1586. I love all of the friends over on the live stream talking about the fall morning. See, my wife, she's like, 
She hates being cold, so she's not into fall. But was it Drew Monk over there? Yeah, Drew said that he's enjoying coffee, listening to AP, and he threw a log on the fire. That sounds nice. What about you? What do you like to do to stay warm? All right, I'm going to try and get over here and get this video played for you. It's time for a little Twitter weirdness. Okay, now, if you're watching the live stream now, if you're listening to us on the podcast later, I'm sorry. Uh, you're not going to get the same effect that you would if you watch the show, and it's better to watch it live, which you should do. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and transition over here. Let's cut over there. I'm going to play this video. I do hear a lot of times, because I've studied karate for about, you know, on and off for about 15 years, maybe 12 years continuously. And you'll frequently hear from people who know, like, maybe a little bit about MMA. Maybe they watch MMA. They'll be like, no, karate doesn't work in a street fight. And uh, I even had a sensei at this really terrible school that I that I went to, you know, talking about how, oh, you're not going to do these traditional things in a street fight and all that kind of stuff. Well, just show this video. This is from my friends over at Art of One Dojo. You know, and, you know, listen, I'm not going to say it's as good as, like, jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu or something like that. There are definitely better martial arts than karate for self-defense. But it's better than nothing. It's better than whatever this street punk guy was doing when he approached this gentleman. Let's take a take a listen. Watch this video here. I'm going to play this right now. And if you're watching it, you can see the guy on the left is the untrained guy. And this, what's funny is this, and let me, let me pause it. See how he's kind of like, he's got this fake stance here going. The guy on the right is the, the karate practitioner. And the guy on the left without the shirt is kind of making fun of him because the guy on the right is like putting up his dukes. He's doing like a real, you know, defensive stance here. And what's, what's funny is that when the only time I've ever used karate in a street fight to, to defend myself, the same situation happened with me where like the guy was like coming after me. So I, you know, went, got into my stance to get ready. And he started doing the same thing where he was like, Oh, making fun of me for like getting in a martial arts stance and like what, well, let's just watch what happens here. Here we go. Okay. So here we go. So the guy on the left, he's probably the instigator. Maybe he's a little bit drunk. So he looked like he's kind of making fun of him. Boom. He goes for this little kick. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. Now watch. Oh, look at that. That's a roundhouse kick. Now watch this. Boom. Oh, goes the dynamite. Let me pause that real quick. I want to bring that back so that you can kind of see here what's going on. So, you know, he's getting the guy on the right. He's obviously nervous. He's getting his bearings. He's throwing some punches. Look at this. Boom. Now watch this. Watch this. Bam, round, like reverse, we call that a reverse roundhouse, comes in, you know, starts wailing on the guy, comes in, starts thinking about it, and bam, right there to the guts. I'll tell you, uh, the one time that I was assaulted on the street, it was in Kansas City in Westport, some crackhead got kicked out of a bar and started talking smack to me and a, a girl that I was having drinks with. And, he, you know, he got up in, in my face and I, I was wearing sandals. Well, in martial arts, they teach you how to fight without shoes. So I kicked my sandals off, you know, so I could cover the retreat of the ladies who were running, you know, to get away. And he comes up uh, within kicking distance. And that was all I needed. Just one good solid kick to the stomach. And the guy was like, oh, and then he ran away. And that's that's all it was. So, you know, I do get a lot of, of people who will contact me, you know, in DMs and say, hey, Austin, I see you're into martial arts. I'm thinking about doing this myself and maybe getting my kid into it. What, you know, what do you recommend? <clears throat> and I absolutely recommend traditional martial arts like karate and, you know, taekwondo and other things like that. Right. You know, not everybody needs to get slammed to the ground 20 times you know, a minute in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and get their ribs cracked and get their head squashed. Right? If you really want to learn proper self-defense, yes, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is the best way to go. But I think this video right here shows you that it's better to have it, to, to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. One more time. Here we go. Guy on the right is your traditional martial arts practitioner here. Boom. Check that. Oh, baby. That is beautiful. Here he goes. Wham! Reverse spin kick and boom, boom, boom comes in to finish him off. You know, is the guy done? Is the guy done? Not sure. And I don't have the rest of the video on this one. Bam! Finishes it off right there. Beautiful. What did you think of that? That's good stuff. Love it. Love to see it. Coming up at 809, Camelia Peterson. I'm gonna talk to her about the STD rates on the rise. Why? Why are the STD rates on the rise, or why are we talking to Camelia Peterson about STD rates on the rise? I don't know. I thought she'd be good for it. <laughs> it's going to be a great show. You don't want to miss a single minute of the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. Real quick, first, before I let you go, the Halloween edition. Let's switch cameras. 
of the Flip City magazine is out. You got to get it. Look at the glowy feds there on the cover. Don't you want a copy of Flip City magazine? Of course you do. I love it. It's hilarious. I laugh all the way through it. They've got this great comic in it. You got to read about the woke world goes to Ukraine. Check this out. This is a woke world takes Ukraine. So all the social justice warriors decide to go to Ukraine and help fight for freedom. You want to find out what happens to them. Get your copy at flipcitymag.com. That's flipcitymag.com. America's last laugh. My favorite comic is Flip City Mag. Check them out. The new Halloween edition at flipcitymag.com. And we'll see you later. We'll be back on the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. Hello, my name is Kelvin. Welcome to Frenchy Bullshit. This is my Didi's website. Now I've decided to speak to you with my real voice for the first time ever to tell you about how cool Frenchy Bullshit is. But I've decided that this is the perfect opportunity to share with you. Frenchy Bullshit is a good website. You should follow us on socials. If you like Frenchies or any kind of bulldogs, me and my new brother George are going to try to make your life more fun. Hello, I'm George. My neck isn't really thick yet, but it will be. We are so glad you're here. Please ignore my floating eyeball. It helps me spot predators who might be approaching from the sides. Dee Dee made Fringy Bullshit to review things that he uses on me and my brother to tell you if it's good or bullshit. Take this collar, for example. Dee Dee really likes it. Dee Dee said it's really handy because us Fringies got thick necks. Need something really tough. People think Fringies are little, but if you look at us from below, you can see we are really pretty buff. Mmm, beef cake. Yes. Look at my creamy thighs and chest. Yes. You like that? Big brother, please focus! Frenchy Bulls. Please follow us for more great content and read the Frenchy Bulls blog for more fun and cool stuff. I'm a public defender. I am a public defender. I'm proud to be a public defender. 80% of Americans accused of a crime will get appointed a public defender. Everybody from a speeding ticket to capital murder. For every dollar we spend on public defenders, we spend $3 on prosecutors. Public defenders have to do pretty much everything on their own. Social workers, counselors. Investigating is another piece of it. The average public defender holds 300 cases annually. You never feel like there's enough time. Public defenders have health issues all the time. A lot of people People give up and say, I can't do this work anymore. Gideon's Promise trains, mentors, and supports public defenders. There are a lot of people who say that they would not still be public defenders, but for Gideon's Promise. It's fueled me to continue on in this fight. Gideon's Promise has changed the face of public defense. People see us as troublemakers. <laughs> Good trouble only. We don't make it easy. It should not be easy to take away someone's liberty. Ever hear the one about the frog? Put a frog in a pot of boiling water and it'll jump right out. Here's my resume again. But put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly heat it up and that frog will boil. It's a lie. But as a metaphor for us and all that we go through as veterans, real-world experience. it's a story that rings true. We make excuses for how we feel. We push everything down. We tell ourselves the lie that it's easier to stay in that boiling water. To disconnect. And some days, maybe, it is. But you've never been interested in easy. Make no mistake, reaching out is hard. Do it anyway. You're not alone. You've got this. You are not a frog.
Find resources at va.gov slash reach. In case you didn't already know, the British monarchy, unlike its non-royal constituents, is legally exempt from paying income tax, capital gains tax, and inheritance tax. A specific British statute allows inheritance to pass from, quote, sovereign to sovereign without being taxed to avoid depleting the royal family's wealth if two monarchs die in quick succession. Therefore, King Charles will not have to pay the regularly applied 40% tax on the $300 million plus fortune he has inherited from the queen, but he has chosen to follow his mother's lead in voluntarily paying income tax. The monarchy cost British taxpayers the equivalent of $118 million during 2021, a 17% increase from the previous fiscal year, according to figures for the sovereign grant, which funds the queen, now king, and the household's official expenses. Good morning. It's 8.07 and you're watching and listening to the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. Joining me now on camera, the lovely Camelia Peterson. Good morning, CJ. How are you today? Good morning. I'm good. Thank you. Great. What did you think of the topic that I chose for you today? Well, you know, I'm just saying Tony gets to talk about taxes. Mm -hmm. It's just not quite fair that I have to talk about STDs. Come on. <laughs> It was just too perfect yesterday when I saw this article and I thought, because I'm always looking for a way to embarrass you, uh, Camelia. Uh, really? No way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I saw this article from STDs to DUIs to uh, all kinds of mayhem. Americans across the country are acting out. Um, so did you have a chance to to read the article and what were your thoughts? I did. And, you know, my overall thought when I read through that was that I think especially over the last couple of years with everything that's happened that there has just been an overall rise in anger. And I think that comes out of fear um, that has been stoked so much and not just fear of COVID, but also fear of what authoritarian figures are going to do to you, how they're going to limit your rights. And that fear turns into anger on both sides. And it's really increased the just constant at each other's throats. And people, it has, an embol it has emboldened people to take action on that. It's not just, you know, I'm going to, you know, be a keyboard warrior and scream at you online or whatever, that people will come up to you in a grocery store and tell you what they think now. I mean, I think that we see that more than we ever used to, whether it's about about COVID or not. If you're just tuning into the show, we're speaking to Camelia Peterson. You can text us this morning at 573-319-1586. So one of the ways I guess that people are acting out is, you know, they're finally getting out and getting some, uh, Camelia. <laughs> Not that they weren't during the pandemic. It's just that people were apparently <laughs> remember when they were talking about how to do it with a mask on and it's like, oh, what is the or fully clothed right well so so now the you know you'll see liberals and they're they're having sex but they're and they're wearing a mask but they're not using protection is that what we're to understand uh nothing makes sense i i believe it you know i would absolutely believe it maybe people have a lot of pent-up energy now or something because they were <laughs> locked down and stayed in their homes you know for the last two years and finally you know joe biden said it's over have at it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not sure about that one there. Um, you can text the show at 573-319-1586. But I mean, I guess this this um, report that we read yesterday from Fortune magazine shows that, you know, ST, not only are STD rates on the rise, but drunken driving is also going up too, huh? Right. And to a certain extent, I was looking at the numbers just a little bit. To a certain extent, it would make sense if you're comparing to um, – the last couple of years where nobody was just people weren't driving as much 
But I do think that the numbers reflected that it's not just up from the last couple of years. This is also a trend, you know, say over the last 10 years or more. And so I don't know. I do think the rise in it, I think, is also comes out of that increased anxiety and fear and anger that is just manifesting itself in us as a society right now. And uh, Brandon Meyer over on the Facebook live stream said, you can't blame me for the STD rise. I got married and turned in my slut card a few years ago. Just saying. <laughs> Leave it to Brandon. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that, that one for Brandon. No, that's mild for Brandon. <laughs> Come on, Brandon. That's the best you got. <laughs> yes, that's that's right. Um, you can text the show at 573-319-1586. That's 573-319-1586. 1586. And, you know, we, we also we saw a lot of uh, videos that came out during the pandemic and now still from people who are acting out on airlines. I mean, this is it's kind of like a psychological phenomenon. You know, people are feeling more liberated, right? They're, people are free to move about the country again. I saw yesterday that Canada dropped their vaccine requirements and their mask requirements for flying into into their country. So, I mean, you know, I, I think it, it's, it's understandable why people would be acting out. But on the topic that we were talking about a little bit earlier, earlier, Camelia, you know, why people aren't going back to work and they're choosing, they say, to sponge off of their parents and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, how do you feel about that topic? Because I mean, personally, after having worked at, you know, I'm 41 years old and I, you know, I've worked for the man for a significant portion of my life and I've had, you know, maybe eight, nine, almost 10 years where I've worked for myself. And as difficult as it was working for myself, as difficult as it was, you know, trying to eke out a living and how are you going to pay for health insurance and all this kind of stuff? I got to tell you, there, there's something about it that that is very attractive. I know that these people are all like, you know, they've got trust funds and they can live off. But I mean, Camelia, if you won the lottery, would you have a job? Sure. Well, I mean, you know, I would do the things that I wanted to do all of the time. Yeah. And so I, I mean, yeah, I think that's every, right. You were telling Tony, like you and Tony were talking about before, that's everybody's goal is to work less. And honestly, as a society, when we talk about automation and we talk about artificial intelligence and all of those things, we are slowly getting to the point where, we can start focusing on some of those higher level human creative innovative things i think hmm. that's wonderful on, on the hierarchy of needs so, so for those of you who are tuning in and maybe you don't know what this is um could, could you explain this to our listeners the the whole hierarchy of needs concept camille you think you can give us a reader's digest version sure well i mean you have your basic hierarchy of needs our focus is to survive first. So we need to make sure we have food, shelter, um, you know, we are clothed, we need our basic needs met. But once those needs are met, we can start branching out into, you know, things like the arts and expression and creativity and innovation. But we don't really, we can't focus on those things as long as we're having to focus on just making sure we have a place to sleep at night and something to eat. For sure. One of the things in the article they talked about, they pulled a quote from <clears throat> LinkedIn. Uh, they called their chief people officer. I guess this is their HR. But they talk about uh, how organizations need to make mental health a top priority as employee burnout reaches historic levels and the great reshuffle workers reconsidering not just how they work, but where and why transforms the work. Uh, the workplace. According to research from global recruiter Robert Walters, three major living crisis, crises will further drive the great reshuffle, the rising cost of living, a post-pandemic mental health time bomb, and the prioritizing of purpose over profession. I mean, on that last point there, prioritizing a purpose over profession, you know, I'm on the side of the people there, right? right. You know, the people are, are going out and they, they're they using this time and maybe the little bit of extra scratch that they might have saved during the pandemic. And they're going out there, they're figuring out what it is, that what their purpose in life is, rather than just sort of being locked into the job. I know employers hate to hear this. And again, as somebody who is, you know, desperately trying to find somebody to hire here, um, I, I got to tell you, it's... I, I, I sympathize with the workers. Sure, I do too. I do think it's interesting. Uh, one of the things that they talked about in there too was uh, that after years of prioritizing workers' well-being during the pandemic, that some uh, corporate leaders are suffering from do-gooder fatigue. And I was like, well, what is that? You know, 
but I think it's this idea that we kind of, like everything, gone too far with that. And that's the nature of our culture right now in that we are prioritizing special interests in the workplace. <clears throat> and we're trying so hard to make sure that everybody is mentally healthy that we are not requiring the basics in their performance standards. And so you know, that I think is a frustration because then you don't get a good quality product in your business. So I think it's like everything else. We need a balance. Yeah, I agree. And I'd like to continue this discussion with you, Camilla. Would you mind sticking around with me through the commercial break for another 10? Sure. Okay, that'd be great. All right. When we get back, we are going to talk to Camilla Peterson a little bit more about this one. And, you know, the whole mental health issue, you know, employers having to deal with it. You know, it's an issue. It's something that they're going to have to deal with. And also, you know, prioritizing time with your family and friends. You know, we, my family, we've had some deaths in our family lately. It's caused me and my wife to start thinking about what we really want to do with our time and how we want to spend it. And, you know, I've had some job offers, but... I don't think I want to go work for somebody else. As a matter of fact, I think I want to stay right here and do the Wake Up America show. Because this is this is self-actualization. This is fun. And I can actually sometimes make a little bit of money. Right? All I need is enough to live. And then I can spend time doing things that make me happy. What about you? Send me a text. 573-319-1586. What are your thoughts? We'll be back on the Wake Up America show. At Wake Up America show... Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star Fiverr talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. American conservatism is distinct like America is distinct from the United Kingdom. American conservatism's roots comes out of the Wild West, out of pioneerism. The difference between American conservatives and European conservatives is that Americans are cowboys. We are that God, guns, gold, and girls. It's wild here. And we should stay that way. We shouldn't allow a European version of conservatism to come and infect us here. We like it wide open spaces here, you know, deep in the heart of Texas and all that. with Austin Peterson. This show has been a huge venture for our family, so we would love it if you could join us. I believe in liberty, and I believe in Austin's ability to spread the ideas of liberty. Do you? I want to ask you today to join Peterson's Patriots with a pledge of $17.76 a month. Help us to stay cancel-proof so we can spread the message of limited government across the country. I joined Peterson's Patriots myself, just in a little different way. Visit wakeupamericashow.com slash support and make your pledge today. Average Americans are turning into conspiracy theorists at an unprecedented rate. Flip City Magazine was created for new converts to aid in their in-depth research along the path of absolute truth. We offer the hardest hitting news and opinion, delivered uncensored in print directly to your door. Display proudly on your coffee table or hide discreetly under your mattress. Flip City is the magazine they don't want you to see, much less read. Subscribe to Flip City Magazine today at flipcitymag.com. Speaker Pelosi's husband, Paul, made a big investment in chips just before Congress votes on a bill that would give $52 billion in subsidies and tax credits to the chip industry. Over the 
course of your career, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information he received from you? No. And I believe if you come to our border, you will be turned back. Do not come. Do not come. Have you ever oh, overseen, have you ever received a royalty playing. payment from a company that you later oversaw money going to that company? You know, I don't know as a fact, but I doubt it. Well, I well here's the thing is, why don't you let us know? Good morning, it's 821 and you're watching the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. Or maybe you're listening to us on the podcast afterwards. You can download the podcast, get the audio-only version, and then we get to skip the commercials as well. But it's better to listen to it live, don't you agree? You can text the show at 573-319-1586. We'd love to have you message us. And of course, over on the live stream, when you comment, the chat pops up on the screen just like it is right now. Matter of fact, somebody... Cecilia said, I love your meadow background, Camelia, talking about STDs in a fairy tale. She's joining us now on camera. Good morning, CJ. How are you doing? Good morning. <laughs> oh, we're, it's, a, we're... it's a good, it's a good autumn morning. Cheers. <laughs> it is. It is a beautiful autumn morning. Tolly Owen says that she's heading out early, y'all. Hate to leave. Hate to lose you, Tolly. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. Camelia, uh, so we've been talking about, you know, quiet quitting, people realigning their priorities, spending more time with family, um, deciding, you know, not to work so much or maybe not to go back to work. And, and you know, we've been talking about how we feel about that one. But I mean, in terms of the mental health question, uh, you know, a lot of employers I feel like are are not equipped to deal with the mental health question of their employees because you know again you know it, it's just not something that employers have had to worry about before and they didn't have to worry about it one because they didn't understand it and two because they didn't have to give a crap they were just like yeah you know you know shut up do your work or go home because we can just fire find somebody else they can't do that now can they right no when we can't even you know pay people 15 dollars an hour to flip burgers well i mean you know uh, employers are going to have to adjust accordingly there's a lot more involved in that but yeah and i do think that it and that really has been something that's interesting to me because i know even <clears throat> when my my daughter anna rosa works in retail for one of the big box clubs and they really management just they don't give a crap. I mean, that it does, they can't hire people and they, and especially good people, people with a good work ethic, but they're still, you know, just treating people like crap. And it, I, that just boggles my mind. I don't get that. Even people who are good workers, I, I don't get it, but <laughs> employers, I think have a culture problem. And I think that they are going to, they are feeling that they should adjust. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. And I mean, when it comes to mental health, I mean, that's such a del delicate subject. It's not the kind of thing that you can just kind of like sit down with your employee and say, hey, do you need a mental health break and all that kind of stuff? Because I mean, there's, you know, HIPAA questions and a lot of that stuff. And, you know, there's a question of, of time off. Now, thank you, by the way, for calling them a big box store and not naming them here. If they want to be named here, they can advertise like everybody else. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, you know, the big box stores, I think, you know, are, aren't equipped to deal with this question. But, you know, maybe smaller employers are. Are. But, you know, again, it's just it's the mental health thing. And maybe I need to get Stephanie in here to talk about it later this week. It, it's the kind of thing where you don't know if it's somebody who's just. I don't know, I don't want to say faking, but I mean, like it's become in vogue to be what they call sure. neurodivergent these days. Am yes. I wrong? No, you're not wrong. You're absolutely right. It's it's really become a bit of a fad, which is really a disservice to people who truly struggle with mental illness. And I hate that, that this has become a thing. And it, it can be a very real issue in the workplace. And the problem is, is that it doesn't matter um, what type of business. 
you're really, it's not the place to deal with those issues. You can be accommodating, you can be understanding to a point. And at some point, you know, that person has to seek help for those things outside of the workplace, because that's just not an appropriate place to deal with it. Um, I have actually experienced, you know, something like this with someone who worked for me. And it, you know, did everything I could to, you know, work with that person and be accommodating. But at a certain point, I couldn't do any more for them. That It was going to have to come from outside. No kidding. Uh, you can text the show this morning at 573-319-1586. That's 573-319-1586. One of our listeners texted in asking a question. And Camelia, maybe you have a thoughts on this one. They said, thoughts on newer MAGA candidates like Blake Masters proposing incentives for families to, quote, raise families on a single income – um, for me, my take on this one, this was how I responded to them is like, that's really, you know, I think it's just pandering, but you know, this is the kind of thing that Mitt Romney would be for. If you really want to, yes. if you really want to insult a MAGA person, compare them to Mitt Romney. <laughs> it's true though. Actually, Mitt Romney and Josh Hawley have both talked about this. Yeah. That if there's one thing that neocons plans. and populists agree on, it's that we need more government. <laughs> yeah. I, you know. We've talked about this before, government subsidizing, you know, child care or giving families, you know, extra perks. And the thing is, is that you're not going to, those are very ineffective. We know that they are ineffective ways to encourage families to, A, you know, maybe have the, the mother stay at home or B, to have more children. You don't incentivize families to have more children by throwing money at them. It just it doesn't work that way. Totally agree. But it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you know, uh, one of our listeners texted in at 573-319-1586. They said the employment market is adjusting for the better. Warehousing kids from six weeks on is not a plan. The Dems social engineering failed. Parents are choosing family and taking education into their own hands. Yeah. You know, I'm seeing that trend as well. During the pandemic, the whole push for for homeschooling, that trend really sped up. And you know what's been really exciting, Camelia, has been to see how our friend Corey DeAngelis has been so successful mm -hmm. in getting people buying into the school choice thing across the country. That's been really a big, big turnabout in the last couple of years, too. Yeah, that has been fun to see. And when you talk about the the unemployment rate and um, people starting to stay home, I do think that you you saw some families who saw the value in staying home and having a more active role in the lives of their children. Sometimes that's dads. It's not always moms. Sometimes it's dads too. And it doesn't matter. It's whatever works for your family. But the interesting thing to me is like somebody, <clears throat> maybe it was Felicity, just asked me the other day, said that, well, you know, if you ask so and so, they'll tell you that people are not going to work because they're getting government handouts, because they're getting unemployment checks. And I told her, I was like, you know, maybe a year or so ago that might have had some merit because we were still handing out that extra, those extended benefits and those extra benefits for unemployment. But we cut that off more than a year ago and we're still having the same issue. So I don't think that's quite it. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. And you will we'll hear that a lot of times from our conservative friends who will say, well, it's because of all these incredible benefits and the stimulus and all that stuff. I'm like, bro, like, does how long does twelve hundred dollars last for you? I, I I don't know. You know what it is though. A lot of our conservative friends got those PPP loans, so they're like, "Well, everybody's just living off the government." And I'm like, "How much did you get from the PPP loan?" You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And you know, there's a whole. I mean, there's a whole other conversation there with you know what the government's obligation was when they decided to shut everybody down and cost them money to begin with, but. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really that was a really good like burn point too. When uh, we had the um, congressional debate here in Missouri that I moderated, and somebody was at using the PPP loan to attack the other person, they were like, "My business, I needed it for my business," and blah 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 blah. And it's just kind of like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Now it's now it didn't look so good. I'm you know I'm glad I don't mess with that government money. I take as little government money as I can. If they send me a stimulus check in the mail, though, that's my money and I'm cashing it. Uh, there you Camilla, go, <laughs> Camilla Peterson, editor of the LibertarianRepublic.com. That's my website. Is there anything else that people should know before I let you go? Well, you know, Tony was talking about the in Missouri, the uh, special or extraordinary session um, that's going on right now. And there's kind of a lull in that and that nobody's coming back and doing anything until later this week. And we talk when you guys talk, I get to talk about taxes for a second. Let's you guys talked it. about grocery taxes and, you know, all these specialty, you know, sales taxes and eliminating them. And here's what I would like to say, especially to the people of Missouri. 
please tell not only your senators, but also tell your representatives in the House that we have a win in the income tax cut that's come through the Senate. And sometimes you need to take your win when you can get it and get it through well. I mean, and pass it through and get it done and then tackle adding on more later. So I would like for us to take this win and we can have that conversation about all of these other taxes that we want to eliminate later. <laughs> <laughs> Take the win. <laughs> Take the W for God's sakes and shut up and go home. Camelia <laughs> Peterson, you're awesome. We love having you on. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great day. Wasn't that great? Send us a text, 573-319-1586. Say goodbye to Camille, y'all. Say goodbye. Yes. Jamie Marie Pope over on the Facebook live stream. She's one of the OG members of the Cantina crew. what she had to say? She says... The first time I heard Corey DeAngelis was on your show. It was around the time I made to leave a Bessie meeting, so I was pretty excited about what he had to say. I've loved seeing him be the guy fighting for our children and for our parents' rights. Yeah, if you don't know Corey DeAngelis, he's on the front line fighting for freedom of school choice here in the United States. He's a great follow on Twitter. He's a good buddy. We should definitely have him on the show again soon. All right, more freedom fighting left to go with Matt Welch of Reason when we get back on the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. Hello, my name is Kelvin. Welcome to Frenchy Bush. This is my Didi's website, and I've decided to speak to you with my real voice for the first time ever to tell you about how cool Frenchy Bush is. But I've decided that this is the perfect opportunity to share with you. Frenchy Bush is a good website. You should follow us on socials. If you like Frenchies or any kind of bulldogs, me and my new brother George are going to try to make your life more fun. Hello, I'm George. My neck isn't really thick yet. But it will be. We are so glad you're here. Please ignore my floating eyeball. It helps me spot predators who might be approaching from the sides. Dee Dee made Fringy Bullshit to review things that he uses on me and my brother to tell you if it's good or bullshit. Take this collar, for example. Dee Dee really likes it. Dee Dee said it's really handy because us Fringies got thick necks. Need something really tough. People think Fringies are little. But if you look at us from below, you can see we are really pretty buff. Mmm. Beefcake, yes. Look at my creamy thighs and chest. Yes, you like that? Big brother, please focus. Frenchy Bulls. Please follow us for more great content and read the Frenchy Bulls blog for more fun and cool stuff. I'm a public defender. I am a public defender. I'm proud to be a public defender. 80% of Americans accused of a crime will get appointed a public defender. Everybody from a speeding ticket to capital murder. For every dollar we spend on public defenders, we spend $3 on prosecutors. Public defenders have to do pretty much everything on their own. Social workers, counselors. Investigating is another piece of it. The average public defender holds 300 cases annually. You never feel like there's enough time. Public defenders have health issues all the time. A lot of people give up and say, I can't do this work anymore. Gideon's Promise trains, mentors, and supports public defenders. There are a lot of people who say that they would not still be public defenders, but for Gideon's Promise. It's fueled me to continue on in this fight. Gideon's Promise has changed the face of public defense. People see us as troublemakers. <laughs> Good trouble only. We don't make it easy. It should not be easy to take away someone's liberty. Ever hear the one about the frog? Put a frog in a pot of boiling water and it'll jump right out. Here's my resume again. But put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly heat it up and that frog will boil. It's a lie. But as a metaphor for us and all that we go through as veterans, any real world experience. it's a story that rings true. We make excuses for how we feel. We push everything down. We tell ourselves the lie that it's easier to stay in that boiling water. To disconnect. And some days, 
Maybe it is. But you've never been interested in easy. Make no mistake, reaching out is hard. Do it anyway. You're not alone. You've got this. You are not a frog. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. Good morning, it's 836. It's time to rise in freedom. You're watching and listening to the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. You can text us at 573-319-1586. That's 573-319-1586. My next guest who's joining me on the line over Zoom is Matt Welch. He is from Reason Magazine and he wrote an article, Why Political Grifting Won't Stop. He's joining us now. Good morning, Matt. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming on the show today. Nice to be in your new digs, and congratulations on them. Thanks so very much, Matt. The subtitle of your new article got my attention. What unites Donald Trump, Black (laughs) Lives Matter, Steve Bannon, and the Lincoln Project? They all got stupid rich by you being big big mad. All right. What's the thesis here? And back it up for us, Matt. What's this all about? So it's about there's an economy at play here. The, The peg to the piece is... Uh, Donald Trump getting sued for a quarter billion dollars in a civil lawsuit in the state of New York. And uh, there's a lot of, you know, the, the the resistance Twitter people with their little toy cannons are like, it's finally going to happen now. Um, and there's always this perennial uh, idea that if just, you know, at, at some point, people are going to realize that Donald Trump is scamming them out of the money. You know, they're going to finally realize that Trump stakes was a scam or Trump University was a scam. And because of that, he's going to pay a political price. And I think this is naive um, on many levels, but it also uh, uh, points to um, something that's universal. It's not just big uh, among uh, Donald Trump supporters, but very much among Donald Trump haters, including the Lincoln Project is in the subhead of the piece. Lincoln Project, for those who don't know, is a group of former uh, Republican kind of political dirty tricksters and consultants who during the Trump era flipped. A lot of them were associated with uh, uh, John McCain campaigns in, in uh, years past. Not all of them. Um, they flipped and now they became they're basically an anti-Trump troll farm who raise a ton of money. Go on MSNBC um, and they use that money to make basically trolling uh, YouTube ads, tweaking Donald Trump and sometimes commercials that air on on broadcast. And they also are known for having uh, incredible internal dissensions, lawsuits, people getting mad, payoffs, uh, sexual harassment allegations that are pretty credible, a bunch of things like that. There's an economy out there that's dependent on people being mad and having political enemies and wanting to express themselves or even express solidarity, as in the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, by just mashing a donate button. There, I've expressed myself politically. Where that money goes, People don't really care. The the act is in the expressive giving. And so people who are, um, let's say, opportunistic in the political world, and this could be media, this could be nonprofits, this could be sort of celebrity celebrity type of people. uh, They're like, cool, they're rubbing their hands at you being mad and hit the donate button and saying, "Okay, I'm going to promise the bare minimum um, and I'm going to get myself rich uh, out of this process. And uh, I wrote this thing in part to try to encourage people on the consumer end to think twice about mashing the donate button really and think twice about like bubbling forward with kind of collectivized hatred towards groups of people um because there is a way you're just basically lining the pockets of hucksters uh regardless of whether you agree with them or not now i'd be curious if you're just tuning in uh to the show the wake up america show you can text us at 573-319 
1586. I'd be curious to know, Matt, like how you kind of like define a grifter and how you identify one. And uh, before before you do, I'll tell you what what I kind of look for is for me, you know, there are a lot of people in politics who are not grifters, who are sincere, you know, patriots, they're fighting for what they believe in, they're raising money for a cause. Sometimes they get results, sometimes they don't, you know, sometimes the political wins may be in their favor, sometimes not. But the what I'm looking for typically is, you know, unless somebody is just, you know, solely focused on one issue, if they're kind of an activist, is, you know, are they willing to tell their people, the people who even who give them money, something that maybe their people don't want to hear even if, you know, if it's the truth, right? To me, when I, when I see a grifter, it's somebody who sees a niche, is playing towards that niche, and they only tell them what they want to hear, even when it's not the truth. They're, in essence, they're lying, like Black Lives Matter. We're going to go out there and we're going to, you know, fight for Black Lives and stuff. And they never, ever, you know, they didn't go against them when they were burning down cities and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, there's there may be perfect examples that are popping in your head right now because of the circles that we run in of people that might be grifters. I've been accused of being a, a grifter despite, you know, you know, the best intentions and, you know, trying to spread freedom the best that I can. You know, you can't fight for freedom with no money, Matt. I mean, you know, you work for a nonprofit. I mean, you get a paycheck, you know, fighting for what you believe in. I'm sure somebody yeah. at some point has called you a grifter. So, I mean, absolutely. How do you, how do you define a grifter and how do you identify one? It's actually a word I, I try not to use most of the time, just because like gaslighting, it's just been kind of overused in the, in the Trump era. Right. Um, uh, partly, uh, as you say, like when when the insincerity is dripping off people, I, we work in media and um, I'm sure, you know, people who fit the following description. Um, uh, this is I'm just pulling in an actual example of a person who I won't name, but uh, who in uh, early 2016 uh, in the conservative media world um, was doing a whole lot of eye rolling at Donald Trump for. Uh, talking about the deep state and the CIA and these kinds of things. And this person had some uh, working knowledge about national security organizations. And, he's, and he uh, said, you know, I, I wish we had a deep state because I mean, maybe we could uh, could have taken out Donald Trump before he won the nomination. Couple Fast forward a couple of years, what's this person doing? He is like out there on the leading edge, thundering about the deep state and its plot against Donald Trump. It's like, <laughs> okay, I see you. I see what you're doing. And, you know, sometimes to, to knit it with uh, your other thing about like sort of the the concept of true believer or sincerity, people um, and, it, and this could describe this person as well, uh, can convince themselves of their true belief, even as they as they switch um, uh, over time. So it becomes a little bit difficult. The way I look at it is if this person is, let's say, uh, in in uh, the media, uh where is their recent track record? Do they have a, a track record of, as you say, uh, saying things that go against the uh, ingrained uh, nature of their audience or saying to their audience, as I do, as you know, I work for a libertarian publication, I will say uh, sometimes like, hey, I know all you libertarians disagree with me when I say X following, right? Like my view on foreign views on foreign policy and NATO are run contra to the dominant kind of libertarian strain. And I will acknowledge that on occasion and I just try to act uh, honestly and authentically according to what I do. But in the nonprofit world, which is where a lot of the, the stuff that I was uh, pointing at in, in this particular case is um, it's worthwhile to slow down and say, and like Black Lives Matter is an example, right? A lot of people who donated to Black Lives Matter in the summer of 2020 because they felt animated by criminal justice reform and perceived racism and policing and, and things like that. Um, they didn't slow down and ask themselves who is producing the most thorough results in this category that I care about right now. Um, so the way to make sure that you're not giving money to a grifter is to pause and ask yourself that question. You see it in the wake of, of uh, any hurricane. Like I'm sure right now there are fraudulent nonprofits um, uh, uh, rising up to help out the victims of Hurricane Ian. It happens every single time, right? Um, and so uh, the, the Red Cross and other people are always saying, slow down. <laughs> go to the Better Business Bureau, um, make sure that the Red Cross is the real Red Cross. And sometimes the Red Cross itself has been in uh, in, in kind of scammy and, and uh, bad uh, uh, expenditure business. So it's darn difficult. Uh, but when if someone is out there absolutely exciting your passion in, and like 
blatantly trying to trigger your fear or, or, or flight response, right? The liberals are coming to get you. The conservatives are coming to get you. Chances are um, they are about to get richer and you're about to get poorer. See, if you're just tuning into the show, we're speaking to Matt Welch of Reason Magazine about why political grifting won't stop. You can text us at 573-319-1586. One of the things that I see, too, that kind of accompanies grifterism, Matt, is tokenism, where, for example, like if you're a, a black uh, if you're a black Republican, then, you know, there's a really good that, that's a really good niche. Right. Be, and, you know, Republicans are more than happy to sort of trot out someone who says they're a conservative if they're black, even if they don't necessarily believe in in conservative principles. And, and so you kind of get tokenism on the right, just like you do on the left. I mean, I'm not saying the left isn't guilty of that. They are. But I mean, kind of with grifterism comes tokenism as well. Right. Yeah. I was actually thinking about this. In terms of the name of your show, Wake Up America, there's a guy I used to cover the uh, uh, the Minutemen uh, protest movement. Right. And right. Like 20 years ago, there was this sort of um, volunteer brigade of people in Southern California and Arizona, mostly Southern California, and sometimes Texas, who would go down to the border. and They would patrol the border themselves. They were they were hepped up about uh, illegal immigration. And so I went to a lot of Minutemen kind of like rallies and gatherings and things. And I found it really fascinating. And as I always do when you do journalism, you meet people and it's great. Uh, and there was a guy uh, named uh, Luca Zana, Gianluca Zana. Look him up on YouTube if you have not, um, okay. uh, who would go to all of these things. Um, very dark skin, um, uh, a recent immigrant, the thickest Italian accent you've ever heard. Um, and he was uh, the uh, the the songwriter for the Minutemen uh, movement. He has an album. It's called Wake Up America. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> um, it's called Wake Up America uh, before it's too late. Um, and uh, he... Uh, he didn't sing most of the songs he wrote and produced. Uh, he didn't sing because his accent's too thick for <laughs> to be a, uh, an anti-immigration balladeer. But he got this Cuban guy to do it, and it's awesome. I kind of love it. It's like a Bon Jovi like uh, uh, anti-immigration record, um, and uh, and they loved to have the recent immigrant be the public face on an anti-immigration uh, uh, campaign. But meanwhile, he himself, and like three years prior to this, he was doing records um, uh, that was trying to cash in on, uh, what was the uh, the Russell Crowe uh, uh, Rome movie? Gladiator. He was trying to cash in on that. It's like, <laughs> I would be your, your gladiator uh, uh, chef, <laughs> right? Like, so he's in his own way kind of doing this. And I know Luca and, uh, and uh, I'm not talking out of school and who knows where he is these days, but, um, but yes, people, there is a sense of tokenism. Oh, we got one. Let's let's, you know, let's immediately uh, put him or her out in front of everything at all times. I, I I've been under the con influence of Camille Foster, my uh, co uh, uh, podcast host over at the fifth column. And before we were over at Fox Business Network on the independence program. And Camille's very much a, a, a race um, abolitionist. Uh, he's dark skinned, but he does not self identify as black. Um, from uh, from uh, Jamaican stock, um, and uh, and so I tried to think of people um, completely individualistically. So I don't really think in terms of token, or I try not to because I see the other side of it all the time, which is to say, if you are melanated, as Camille would put it, and you don't necessarily agree that America is was uh, the most like you know, America is the font of slavery and, and awfulness and that capitalism uh, is the per, is the uh, is the, the the source of slavery as well uh, then immediately you get uh, called an Uncle Tom and a token and all of these kind of things I, I think that we we overthink a lot of these issues um, uh, and 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 in doing so we deny the individualism and the agency of people from non-dominant tribes. If you're just tuning in, we're speaking to Matt Welch of Reason Magazine about political grifters. You can text us at 573-319-1586. Okay, so we've done some big picture stuff, Matt. And since you're kind of like me, you know, you're a movement libertarian and you're, you've got your ear to the to the uh, to the ground on a lot of these issues. I'm going to talk about something or ask you a question that's related to a little bit more of, you know, insider libertarian politics, if you don't mind, and if our listeners sure. will, indul okay. will indulge me. Uh, but, you know, we've seen a, a you know, sort of a sea change in the liberty movement over the last 10 years from, you know, the heights of the Tea Party when, you know, uh, people like Thomas Massey and, and Mike Lee and Rand Paul and others were elected now to, you know, a, an upswell of populist movements here in the United States. 
States, led by people like J.D. Vance and, um, you know, Peter Thiel, who, you know, was an, you know, a kind of an erstwhile libertarian. He would speak at Students for Liberty conferences and things like that. And he now seems to have, you know, abandoned us for this new populist movement, you know, led by Trump and Blake Masters from Arizona and others. And we saw, you know, in, in Italy, for example, that, you know, populism is sweeping there as well. So it's sort of a global, global enterprise. And, and what's what's interesting about it is that, you know, many of the people, if you could call, you know, there's a brain trust of the populist movement, you know, you, you might can call them perhaps, if you were to label their ideology, paleoconservatism, which is about mm -hmm. as close as you might approximate, approximate to it. Now, for a while there in the liberty movement, you know, people like Pat Buchanan would say nice things about Ron Paul, right? And, and you had a lot of people who were populists or paleoconservatives who were buddy buddy with libertarians you know people over at the you know the american conservative you know magazine would fr would frequently host you know libertarians to write columns and things like that and it, it sort of changed in recent years whereas these populists of paleo conservatives have gotten power now they they call themselves many of them national conservatives it seems as if their enemy number 1 is not the left but it's libertarians. It's people like yourself <laughs> and myself. Have you noticed this? And why do you think this is like, why this special hatred from these populists who, you know, if you saw that Soho debate, you know, there was a, a gentleman who, you know, blamed child drag shows on libertarians and the, sure. you know, the laissez faire attitude that we have toward, towards social issues. You know, it's, it's like, we just got, you know, the neocons were defeated, right? Their foreign policy is now sort of on the back burner as these paleo conservatives have come forward, it's nice to see them being less belligerent when it comes to overseas military action. But I mean, they're very much for social welfareism here at home. They're very anti-capitalist and they're very, as Steven Crowder and Alex Jones call themselves, anti-libertarian. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think part of it um, is there's an attempt um, to kind of backfill uh, an ideology over the unicorn nature of Donald Trump. Donald Trump was a really interesting collection, um, you know, kind of incoherent, but just, you know, sweet, generous. It's, he's his own person when it comes to um, his set of politics. Well, about the only through lines in his entire political career that's gone up and down and, and the other were are two things uh, very strongly uh, in favor of limiting and enforcing limiting immigration and enforcing heavily against illegal immigration and, and being anti-trade. Right. Everything else is kind of malleable in his in his uh, uh, lifetime of political uh, worldviews. And so I think a lot of uh, opportunists, um, and I don't need, mean that in a negative sense, but people uh, were trying to say, okay, Trumpism has to mean something, right? This is a political revolution. Um, it, it upended so many uh, people's, including my own, uh, conception of how politics works in this country. So um, let's sort of fill an ideology behind it because he's going to leave at some point. <laughs> theoretically um and let's have this thing and it also uh corresponds with um uh a set of ideas that people felt like were um kind of had lied fallow or had been disrespected for a long time so i think peter Thiel saw donald trump as a vessel for his own idiosyncratic ideas which have always been about limiting immigration in, in addition to other kinds of things too um and so people are sort of furiously cobbling this together. So Rob Amari, you know, is 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 all there's the, the Nat, NatCon conference that happened recently, uh, national conservatives trying to figure this all out. Um, and I think also uh, you have a, a subset of libertarians like the people who've just uh, um, uh, engineered the takeover, self styled takeover of the Libertarian Party, who see a return to the kind of paleo libertarian idea of the early 1990s, which was. I think a disastrous idea, but other people have different ideas uh, about this, an attempt to kind of corral, to catch the populist tiger by the tail and to say, OK, we're going to excite the masses by getting involved in a culture war. The chairman of the uh, chairwoman of the Libertarian Party, Angela McArdle, like yesterday, was tweeting about, hey, look, you know, I know some of you don't like culture war, but we've got to fight the culture war. That's what excites people. And if we can excite people and get them on our side. And that's how we begin. The no. I mean, I'm not a member of the Libertarian Party, so I can easily say I can easily uh, disagree with things in there. But like I didn't sign up for any kind of libertarianism because I wanted to fight a war. It's kind of the opposite. Right. It's because I wanted to sort of think for myself and limit the size and scope of 
of the statism around me and to maximize individual freedom and and uh, and latitude. Um, it's not to uh, identify a mobilize a group of people against another group of people. Um, so I, I think one of the um, the intellectual shortcuts that all these people are taking, and it's going to lead to policy disasters, and we're already seeing this, um, is that by identifying you know this other tribe that we need to fight a culture war against we're going to fight the war against wokeism we're going to fight the war against this and that and the other and you know they might be using my source material in some of these things too the journalism that, that i do and that's fine do what you want with, with with my work but don't draft me in your war um you're going to make mistakes of of collective negative collectivism and you're going to start seeing government as a um uh as a means by which to punish your enemies. And we're already seeing this in a huge way right now in the Republican Party. My colleague Stephanie Slade, man, or not managing editor, before managing editor of the Reason of Reason magazine, she's written really wonderfully about the uh, national conservatives. And she just has a Twitter thread this morning uh, talking about this, about the, the difference in just three years, four years in the NatCon conference. Um, it's gone from people kind of wonkily talking about how we should be more open to kind of industrial policy and welfare state uh, conservatism to uh, we want to drink delicious liberal tears and fight against the woke institutions like Disney um, and like punish them with government. Um, that's a difference. And that's not any that's not libertarian. It's not conservatism. It's not anything that I'm interested in doing, um, except to say, uh, slow down. Don't do it. Man, just when I think the populist uh, libertarians have got me, you pull me back in, Matt. That's good stuff. <laughs> Matt Welch from Reason Magazine. Thank you for being so generous with your time today. We're grateful to have you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. You too, Austin. Thanks so much. What did you think of Matt Welch? Send us a text, 573-319-1586. We'd love to hear from you about your thoughts. Maybe you agree. Maybe you disagree. But I want to hear from you, 573-319-1586. And I went long with that interview, but I can because... I'm not constrained by the FCC. The FCC has let me be because I'm no longer on talk radio. I'm now streaming live across the internet so I can go for as long as I want. I'll be back with some final words in just a few on the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. I enlisted as a medic to be there to help my patients. And after an injury, I found myself as a patient. I experienced post-traumatic seizures. Depression is a big one that comes along with it, PTSD. So I pursued my PhD in neuroscience and regenerative medicine. The coalition has helped fund my academic pursuits. They genuinely care about helping the vet in whatever way that they can. Through supporting the coalition, you're supporting some of the veterans that have the biggest needs. Visit saluteheroes.org to learn more. If there wasn't going to be somebody who was a fiery champion of liberty, somebody who would, who would get out there and who would be aggressive in it, if they wouldn't do it with more fire or passion than I had, then I would go and I would fight this battle for us. I've fought for the principles that we all share. Parties tend to be secondary to me. We're here because we believe in the principles of liberty. I am not a perfect messenger, but I think I'm a damn good one. This is a replica of our first president's flintlock pistol. You have my full support, my respect, and my gun. matter are lies to be encouraged instead of punished this is not our inheritance if truth no longer matters we will not remain free for long this is our generation's challenge to defend our founders hope that we the people could self-govern if we defend our right to get the facts and right now we're building the only defense a free people have the facts on every politician 
every position they held, every statement they've made, every vote they've made, and any cash they've taken. It's the real history on those now pandering for your vote. There are hundreds of young people building our defense right now, and they need your help. We all have our passions, but as our ancestors knew, when events become so foul they threaten us all, we must stand and defend each other. Please, have our backs. Join us at votesmart.org. What would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors? What would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. Is me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. Halloween is coming! The Festival of Salwag approaches! And your lazy butt doesn't have a Halloween costume yet? How can you pledge allegiance to the Dark Lord this year and possibly offend everyone at the same time? Visit the AP for Liberty shop and get your shirt today! The nine most terrifying words in the English language are I'm from the government and I'm here to help! <laughs> so grab your government is scary tea and tell everyone at the party that you're here to help! <laughs> Other great seasonal items are available as well, so don't miss out and visit AP for Liberty Shop today. That's AP for Liberty Shop dot com. <laughs> It's 9.02 and you're watching the Wake Up America show. The show's supposed to be over, isn't it? Well, you know, I can pretty much do whatever I want, right? Because it's a live stream. Yeah, some people had to go. I see Matt Unruh, Camellia, and a bunch of people said that they had to run. But sometimes we like to stick around a little bit longer. I just want to say on the question of grifting, you know, it's tough sometimes to determine whether or not someone who's fighting for a cause truly believes what they say. It can be hard to tell the difference. Some people are really good at it. Whenever we talk about political grifting, you probably thought of someone immediately. And you know, other people, but maybe it's a little bit harder to spot. One thing I'll tell you though about me, people who know me know that I deeply believe in freedom and that what I do on this show in my career is to fight for the principles of liberty. I believe in economic freedom, and I believe in your personal liberty. You own your life, you own your body, and you ought to be able to do as you please, provided you harm no one else. To me, that is the essence of liberty. Freedom, free markets, capitalism. To me, grifters are always gonna be there. But if you watch the Wake Up America show, We'll help you point it out a little bit more. You know, you get a lot of big brain time on this show. And we watch, when you watch the Wake Up America show, you're not just going to get the typical talking points that you might get on a lot of political talk shows. I just want to let you know how grateful I am for your support for this program. Uh, we are now in, I believe, the fourth week of the Wake Up America show, and things have been going smoothly. If you think that the show is going great, give us a like. Make sure that you subscribe to us. Uh, we're almost halfway to monetization over on YouTube, so if you would give us a subscribe over there at AP for Liberty, I'd be super grateful. We're going to be giving away the wooden sign behind my head here for the Second Amendment at the end of this week. So make sure that you get your entries in. If you are a monthly pledge supporter of the show, you're automatically entered in. You can donate $5, $10, or $17.76 to become a member of Peterson's Patriots. And you are automatically entered in to win that sign behind. We'll give it, give it away this Friday. And then uh, if, you, if you don't want to become a monthly pledge supporter, no problem. You can get a free entry just by heading to AP for Liberty Shop dot com and giving your email 
at the top of the website, you'll see me holding the sign with my buddy, Doug Ashby, who made it. Uh, and then just give us your email there and then you'll get a free entry into the, um, into the contest giveaway because we give away prizes every single month to all of the monthly pledgers. But this month we're doing a special where we can give it away, not to, not just to the pledgers, but for, you know, people who are wanting to support us by sending us your email. So anyways, I got to go. It's been a great show. Thank you very much for watching. What was your favorite part? What did you like the most? Write a comment before you go. That helps us boost up the algorithm because Facebook is, man, they're killing me. They're just like, no, you cannot talk to your people who want to follow you. So give us a like, give us a comment, give us a share over on Facebook. Help us beat Mark Zuckerberg's algorithm over there. What do you say? Facebook.com slash AP for Liberty on Twitter and Instagram as well. All right, we got to run. It's been a great morning. I feel amazing. I hope you do too. Thanks for sticking around in the last few minutes and we'll see you tomorrow on the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. shooting things. But whenever I can't shoot something, I like to cut things. My life isn't all about shooting and stabbing and cutting, though. Sometimes I have to do actual work. But when I work, I still like to have fun. And there's nothing less fun than trying to cut with a crappy knife. Thankfully, from the ancient sect of Christian knights, who also loved cutting and stabbing, comes a new implement that has received my personal blessing. The Templar Knife. Like the ancient sword of Excalibur, you don't choose a Templar Knife, it chooses you. You just decide what kind you want on the website first, however, and then order it online, and then it chooses you. The Templar Knife comes in a variety of shapes. As a man of culture and taste, I have decided I will never use a terrible knife again. And thanks to the inspiration provided by this excellent product, I have decided to launch a new crusade against anyone using less than superior knives. Join me, brothers and sisters, by visiting uppercuttactical.com slash pages slash Templar dash knives. That's a lot of slashes. For that, you'll need a Templar knife. For 10% off, use code AP for liberty and join me in a quest for glory, for liberty, for Christendom, for the Templar knife. Get yours today. Fire. Your printing company stinks. They charge you too much money and they don't love America enough. We've got the solution. Patriot Printing USA. Whether you're running for office, saving souls, or just need business cards that will get you the new job you've been looking for, Patriot Printing USA has got you covered with the best prices around. Palm cards, brochures, bumper stickers, door hangers, you name it, we've got it. PatriotPrintingUSA.com That's PatriotPrintingUSA.com Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star Fiverr talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. Average Americans are turning into conspiracy theorists at an unprecedented rate. Flip City Magazine was created for new converts to aid in their in-depth research along the path of absolute truth. We offer the hardest-hitting news and opinion, delivered uncensored in print directly to your door. 
display proudly on your coffee table or hide discreetly under your mattress. Loop City is the magazine they don't want you to see, much less read. Subscribe to Flip City Magazine today at flipcitymag.com. I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. It is better to settle these matters in the courts than on the streets, and new laws are needed at every level. But law alone cannot make men see right. <laughs>